James Mathers for Studio Daily and the Digital Cinema Society at NAB 2010. And a tradition that we've been maintaining for the last few years, we're going to start our interviews with Ted Shilowitz from Red. Uh, Ted, what do you got new here today? We have a lot of stuff new. Um, obviously, I'm here with a Red One. I'm on the NAB show floor, and I just happen to be in the Sackler booth. I've been wandering around saying hi to my, uh, a lot of my friends and colleagues here at NAB. And uh, there's lots of interesting new stuff. Of course, we're going to show our new Epic camera, which is the next generation camera that's coming. Uh, we've been upgrading the Red One cameras that have been, of course, out in the field now in the thousands to the MX Red Ones. This happens to be one of the first ones ever upgraded because this was uh, the number seventh camera ever off the line. It's owned by my buddies in New York uh, off Hollywood. So they have number six and number seven, and of course a whole bunch more now. That's even earlier than mine. Yeah, just by a few numbers. Uh, you've had your camera upgraded to the same sensor that will go into an Epic, which we call the MX or Mysterium X sensor. And obviously seeing some of the benefits of that, this massive dynamic range um, and uh, usable um, uh, photographic latitude from top to bottom in terms of how low the noise floor is on this new sensor, we're able to shoot some absolutely incredible images uh, in incredibly low light situations. So uh, this week at our, uh, uh, right before this week at NAB, we've been running our class called Reducation, which is our education class, five days of, of teaching of the RAD and the post workflow. And the students from all over the world have been shooting half with MX cameras and half with Red Ones. Both, of course, are marvelous cameras, but doing really low light testing with Red with Red One MX cameras in ways that they're like, we don't really think we have enough light. I'm like, trust me, shoot it this way, and we'll go look at it um, in extraordinary low light uh, conditions. So rating it AS, ISO 800, uh, 1000, 2000, and pushing it. And then because of the technology that we have in the class, and of course this is becoming more and more commonplace, um, we have a red rocket system, which is our hardware accelerator, so we can load the material that they shoot and put it into these systems. And we have everything in real time, including up to 4K playback. So we have a 4K playback system from a company called IGI that builds these advanced 4K um, uh, projection systems, and we do something that we call instant leads, which used to be dailies in the film world where you process it and the next day you get to look at your film. Now we can shoot and we can bring in footage right away and look at it in 4K. Uh, and you know we're seeing just incredible results on these new, on new cameras. So that's all with the existing camera. And then I was over here this morning and I was showing my buddy Kurt, who runs these Artemis rigs, um, what the new Epic form factor camera will be like. And of course he got pretty excited, so I said, for Jim's interview, let's do something special. So there's Kurt waiting in the background. I thought I saw an Epic flying around. And that's an Epic system. Now, interestingly enough, this is fully configured and ready to shoot, just like this. We don't need anything else on this camera. So when Kurt, of course, saw this, he went big smile on his face, and mounted it up on the lightest possible uh, Artemis rig, and just went to town. So I'll let him show it to you, and then I'll tell you some of the features. How does it compare flying this? It's wonderful to fly this. You know, you've got a very lightweight, very compact camera, so it's very easy to set up the rig. It's fast, and you will have a perfect dynamic balance in the end. So that's a lot of fun to operate this. And what kind of weight are we talking about? Ooh, the nothing. Camera body, yeah, nothing for you, right? <laughs> yeah. The camera body's about five pounds. This lens is our new 17 to 50, which is an amazing optical quality. This would not be the lightest lens he would mount on this by any means, but this is a nice all-purpose zoom, very small, compact. But this lens weighs about five pounds. Um, he would put a, you know, a very light prime on this and so just go to town. Like this? this is probably a little less than 10 pounds right now. And I, I'm adding another eight and a half pounds. So this and is... of course we have this top hand grip. This can go away. This could go away. In a normal configuration, I brought the small BOM EVF. This will be shipping very soon for both Red Ones and for these new cameras, the Epic, when they come out. And of course this will be used on a Scarlet as well if you want. But in a normal configuration, you'd probably have a small LCD panel, one of our new touchscreen LCDs. There's a little tiny uh, 2.8-inch one and a 5-inch, and he might even want a 9-inch heads-up display because it's so light, he can manipulate and do other things. What's really cool from my standpoint is the way we control this Epic camera is uh, pretty advanced as well. So I can remove this guy. This is our red mote, so our version of the remote. And we can control a lot of the functionality, the project settings. We can play back clips. The uh, assistant can view a histogram set um, you know the, the proper things without having to come onto his camera world and work remotely wirelessly it makes it even lighter and makes it even lighter not much lighter because this doesn't weigh much and then when he wants it back if he wants to control it he's often ready to go to work and I understand you can monitor with the iPad now you yeah well you can um, 
we're, right now we're doing dailies viewing on the iPad, and then there's all kinds of new things that we have in the works. You, you might be surprised at some of the things that our engineers have up our sleeves, or maybe you wouldn't when you see this. This is higher resolution than the Red One. This is a 5K camera, which of course uh, resolves uh, over 4K true resolution. So, uh, you know, a big thing for us is shooting with real high resolution tools. If you're a professional shooter like you are, you, in my opinion, don't want to be working with a low resolution camera. So a 1080p or a 2K camera will get you to today, but it won't future-proof your content, and it won't really achieve the goal of film resolution, right? This camera does that um, with in spades, you know, with, with more to spare. Uh, so um, for, from our standpoint, if you really want to be a professional in the world of where we're moving into 4K delivery and 4K projection, you want to be working on a RED camera. Well, nothing surprises me from Red anymore. Thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you, Ted. Good stuff. Sure.